So uh, my talk is called Build Time Auto Instrumentation for Android. And a little bit about me, uh, that's my avatar. You might have seen that on the GitHubs. Um, I, my name is Jason Plum. I use he and him pronouns. I'm a software engineer at Splunk. And I'm uh, BreedX SPLK on GitHub. I've uh, been to Splunk about four years working in uh, observability and instrumentation a little over five years. And um, currently an approver on some open telemetry Java projects and a co-maintainer on open telemetry Android. And sometimes I look like that too, not just that other picture. All right, so a little bit of an agenda. This is funny how much of this uh, kind of overlaps with some talks that we saw earlier today. So just uh, bear with me on this. I think uh, you'll see some repetition perhaps. Uh, but really, we're just gonna cover like what is auto instrumentation anyway so that we can apply that to Android. Kind of the history of like how it works in the Java agent because that's the premise for some of this and how we actually do it on Android. We'll do a short demo and then we'll talk about kind of some limitations of this approach and then where the future might take us here. All right, let's get on this road. So what is auto instrumentation? So this is a really bad pun, which is maybe the lowest form of humor that exists. Uh, no, it's, it's not really, it's not that. Um, but I think if you're in this room, you probably have some indication already. So begs the question, what is instrumentation? And man, Reese's slides were so much better than these, but... Um, <laughs> So I'll, I'll give you my uh, explanation of what I say instrumentation is. That's me. I say instrumentation is extra code that you can put in like around, above, or below existing software to like make it observable. Right? So you run software without it. instrumentation. It does a thing. Maybe it does. Maybe you know about it. Maybe you don't. But you add instrumentation. Now you now you know some things you didn't know before. All right. Knowing now what instrumentation is begs the question: What is manual? Well, sorry. What is auto instrumentation? You might have heard of manual instrumentation where you do it the hard way, and for many, many years, a lot of us did this the hard way, where you have to write code to generate your telemetry. You increment counters. No, never, never, never did manual instrumentation. Um, so you're incrementing your own counters, you're generating your own telemetry, building tracing by hand. It was a nightmare. And you know, there's still plenty of uses for this, but it shows you how much code you kind of have to craft by hand just in order to get your application logic going. So this is an example taken from some docs. And so my spicy take, this is the Reaper X pepper. It's the hottest pepper um, in the world. So I assert that auto instrumentation is just a heaping pile of hacks that allow you to apply instrumentation to existing code with like little to no change, right? So that's, that's what auto instrumentation as a, as a concept is. Uh, and there's different ways that you can achieve this, right? And I think there was a last talk or two talks ago in that room. I was a lot more detail on this topic. Talked about monkey patching, bytecode weaving, eBPF, all those techniques that you can use to do auto instrumentation. So how we do it in Java. So this is like a very high level hand wavy view of like how an application runs in the Java world. You have a JVM that's loading application code and through class loading these dot class files compiled JVM bytecode comes into the VM from a jar file or it's sitting in the class path somewhere. And that's without instrumentation. And the way that we auto instrument is by injecting this Java agent in the class loading process. And so as these classes are being loaded in, it's intercepting those and wrapping application logic, which might be like this red stuff with some blue stuff that is instrumentation code. And out pops metrics, out pops traces. Okay, so well, then what if I were to tell you that like Android has no Java agent? You can't simply uh, add a dash Java agent uh, to the command line because Android doesn't know what a command, well, maybe it kind of does, but not when you click an application to start it, there's no desk job agent. There's also no real uh, clear uh, way of hooking at runtime into the class loading mechanism on the Android platform. And yeah, for a couple of uh, really good reasons, like Android is no longer a JVM. Maybe once a long time ago before the the wars that shall not be spoken of. Um, maybe it was, but it definitely isn't anymore. And uh, so that complicates things. And then also, uh, in the mobile world, uh, we love optimization and obfuscation. So wanting to make apps run faster, uh, so you optimize the hell out of your code, and then obfuscate it because it's running everywhere and you don't want people to easily be able to reverse engineer your super amazing application. 
right? So even if there were runtime hooks, like even if, there, even if the Android platform was nice enough to provide a way of getting at that bytecode loading, uh, this obfuscation really makes that hard because here's an example. You had a class called foo and it has one method called nuke from orbit that has a single parameter called target. And after obfuscation, that literally just becomes a class named g with a single method called a and an argument called r, like you get the picture. So it's really hard to craft an advice to target that method when its name can change um, between builds, right? There's no consistent way of doing that. All right, so we're in Android world, what can we do about it? We can instrument ahead of time. So this is called a number of different things, uh, compile time instrumentation, ahead of time instrumentation, or just I call it typically build time instrumentation. And so now we can look a little bit, comparing this or contrasting this with the Java uh, runtime process, let's look at the Android build process. So usually you have a bunch of source code here in a group of Kotlin files or Java, Java source code files. And the tool that you use to build Android apps is called Gradle. This is this elephant icon. And uh, it leverages something called AGP, the Android Gradle plugin. And that sits on top of the Android SDK. And it compiles your source code with third-party libraries into a set of class files. So far, so good. Then there's an additional step, which is a part of the build process, called the dexing step. And it takes your compiled class files and, again, using AGP, sitting on the Android SDK, converts those class files into a series of dex files. This is a Dalvik executable. Dalvik used to be the, run, the name of the runtime on Android. Um, it's still the binary executable format. So these dex files contain uh, classes from your libraries, but also classes from your application, and a bunch of other resources, right? OK, so that's the, that's the build process today. Fortunately, AGP, the Android Gradle plugin, provides us this API. And it gives you a way to process intermediary build artifacts. So late in that stage, as build artifacts are being generated, you can hook into this transform API. And it's great that they provide that to you. Like, it's really handy, how, how very nice of them. But it's very complicated, much like the, uh, much like the transform classes in the, um, the Java compiler are very complicated. This is also very complicated to hook into. So, uh, you, you can use this, and people do, but um, it's, it's a lot to, to take in. So fortunately, there exists the ByteBuddy Gradle plugin. So much like at um, runtime, we use a ByteBuddy library to, um, to target various areas of our class. We can leverage this at build time, and you'll see the part that I circled there. It allows you to, to create a custom plugin that is used at build time. And so we definitely use the Byte Buddy Gradle plugin at runtime, uh, sorry, at build time in order to hook instrumentation uh, into code. And what that looks like here is you'll see on the right this BBGP Byte Buddy Gradle plugin um, hooks in with instrumentation libraries and then can do the same thing that we saw in the Java world where you have instrumentation code then wrapping uh, user code. Or in, in our case here, third party library code which we will see shortly. OK. So we saw that that ByteBuddy Gradle plugin allows you to write a plugin. So here's an example of an, an actual plugin from the OpenTelemetry Android project. And the two methods we care about here are the matches method and the apply method. The matches is sort of an optimization step because you don't want every single class that's being built to necessarily have to go through this plugin. So it's a way to shrink the focus down to just the class you care about. And in this case, that class is the OK HTTP client, which is an HTTP client that's very common on Android. And when this plugin is then applied to instances, or not instances, in, uh, to, the, to the class OK HTTP client being built, uh, when it's applied, you kind of have to read this backwards. But the way that I read this is that um, you've got this dynamic type builder. And this is saying, hey, builder, when you encounter the constructor, that takes exactly one argument of type HTTP client builder, apply this advice class. So you're kind of reading it like, like bottom first and then back to the top. But so when you, when you see a constructor, apply this advice. So that constructor that takes that one argument, apply this advice. And then what does that advice look like? That's another piece of our instrumentation code, again, taken right from OpenTelemetry Android. And this uh, says, 
to apply this instrumentation on method enter. So when the, the, at the point at which the constructor is entered, uh, do these things. And we intercept that builder that's being passed to the constructor. We, we now have access to it. And we say, builder interceptors, do you already contain our instrumentation classes? And if it doesn't, we add them, one, two, three. And then we add our tracing interceptor. So we, we, this particular instrumentation does more than tracing. Like it's got some counters and stuff in here too on resends and, and et cetera. But the, the main thing here is that there are four, four pieces that get added. Okay, so then we have this instrumentation. We have Byte Buddy Gradle plugin. How do you use it? Well, it's not code free. It's not te technically you have to do something. You don't automatically get it, even though it's called automatic instrumentation. You do have to put two lines uh, into your build script. So you have to include the Byte Buddy plugin. You might, have, you might have already added that for some other reason. If so, then it's only one line of code, and that is the dependency here that's shown. Okay, so now we'll do a quick demo. And what I'm going to show you involves a little server written in Node.js, instrumented with OpenTelemetry. And it has a slash item endpoint. And when you fetch that, it gives you a random emoji. And what I'm going to be using as our back end Oops. What I'm going to be using as our back end is Jaeger, which is a tracing back end. So I'm going to start Jaeger first, and then I will start that server. And those are both up. And then I'll show just very quickly what's going to happen in the Android application. So we have this refresh button. And when you click it, there's an on click. That when you click it, uses something called an icon fetcher to fetch a new icon. And then this icon fetcher, and hopefully y'all can see that, this icon fetcher has this method that makes the OKHTTP client instance, and it stores it right up here. And then in this, it, in this fetch, um, it does a request to this URL, which is the local server that I'm running, and then it returns the new item that it fetched. Cool, and it's, you know, it's async. All right. So let's uh, take a look at the build script. I currently have that ByteBuddy plugin uh, commented out, so we're gonna run this. And it takes a non-zero number of seconds to start this uh, emulator, or to, run the, to build the app and, and run it. And we do have the Byte, bug, Byte Buddy Transform plugin enabled, even though that line uh, is disabled. Uh, we do still have it. So it, it is part of the build chain, but not the specific instrumentation. It's currently not wired up. It's, it's very close. And the downside is that we have to do this again with the instrumentation involved. So. Yeah, for those who, who joined um, a little bit later, I had to restart my IDE right before. The, okay, anyway, so hopefully you can see that uh, emulator on the right-hand side there, and there's a refresh button, and we click it, we're just fetching different icons from that service, right? So if you're a Sky fanatic, this is the app for you. Um, very loosely modified, like modeled after the, uh, the astronomy shop. Okay, so this, this is not that. But if we go over to Jaeger now, and we look at the telemetry that we gathered, not that, and not that, and, but this. Um, do a refresh, and we will see that we have data for both the application and the server components. So let's look at the server components first. We'll find traces. And we see each of my clicks that I made there. And they're very boring. It's just the server side. There's no linkage between what happened in the, on the client. There's no client instrumentation. And so it's just a bare kind of trace hanging out by itself, but we had some client stuff. Let's look at that. Go in there, and oh, I don't even see my clicks. They're not even here. The only thing we see is like the app start, right? So that's part of the uh, OpenTelemetry Android SDK, generates an app start, that's all we see. So I promised, I promised you that we would have to repeat that exercise, and so let's do that now. Um, well, that is, I have to hit the sync button before I can rerun it. And then uh, while that's starting up, Okay, while that is starting up, I'm going to restart Jaeger just to get a clean slate.
And it's really hard to see probably, but there is a build step here called debug byte buddy transform. So literally it's like applying that plugin now. It, that plugin was uh, wired up before. And if I really wanted to do a better demo, I would have just commented out the uh, plugin up here as well. And then that step wouldn't have been in the build. And the build might have been a little faster. All right, so we're back. And we can still use our button to refresh. We're collecting new fanatical sky icons like crazy. Uh, you can kind of guess where this is going, I hope. Going into Jaeger, uh, we see both, both things here. If we click on our, our uh, app now and find traces, yay, we see all of our clicks. Not only that, we see that they're connected with the server side. Right, so just by enabling that one line, there's no manual instrumentation in my application code at all. All I did was add that one line of Byte Buddy, and now we get linked traces between your client side application all the way down to your server side. And that's where all the applause would happen. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right, so back, back to slides, let's see. So this is not a non-interactive part, but so when you build an application on Android, the thing that comes out is called an APK, that's an Android package, and or an application package. And um, something to keep in mind, again, I emphasize this about the runtimes, but Android runtime is not the JVM runtime. Um, Android Studio allows you to crack open that APK and ins inspect the contents. And it takes a little time to sort of find out where these classes might live, but I managed to find the OKHTP OK client living in classes 3.dex. And it's uh, very generous in that it lets you right click and then do show bytecode for that compiled artifact inside the DEX, inside the APK. Um, but before I show that, I just want to remind you that Dalvik bytecode is not Java bytecode. So if you come from a Java world, you have exp experience there. What you're going to see might be something unusual for you. And then I also wanted to emphasize that that client block that, that creates the OKHTP OK client um, instance, that has bytecode that looks like this. And that code is identical in both demos that we saw. So the instrumented and non-instrumented. And this, I just wanted to like, to show this to hammer in the point that the instrumentation happens inside the constructor because that's where we told it to. It doesn't sort of wrap the call site or anything like that. It actually happens in the bytecode. So the place where we make the client, this is identical in, in both cases. All right, so first up, without the bytecode weaving, the first, first demo that we saw uh, looks like this. This is the constructor of OKHTP OK client. I had to scroll down to find this, but this is the constructor that takes that builder, the single argument, and you'll see that it just starts doing constructory buildery stuff, right? It's looking at the argument to make sure it's not null, and then it's calling initialize on something, and then uh, you know doing some more just boring initialization stuff. But clearly, there's no instrumentation happening here. Okay, so we'll repeat that exercise, crack open the APK, find the class, open it, and we see the same method constructor that takes the OKHTP OK client builder. And there's open telemetry stuff in here now. We'll see that the first thing it does is grab the list of interceptors, and it puts that in V0. And then it's setting OKHTP OK singletons, which that was our callback context interceptor. That was the first one in our list of four. It's setting that into this V1. And then it's invoking the contains method on the list interface with our object that we stored up here. And it's moving that result into V0. Reading bytecode is very exciting, I know. Um, and then um, you know, it's, it's checking to see if it got zero. That means, is this thing in the list? So you can see kind of the bytecode representation of our instrumentation class, our advice class, uh, dropped right into this constructor. If you scroll down a little bit, you see more of this. It's ultimately then adding it to that list of interceptors right here, and then moving on to the next piece of instrumentation. So this bytecode's really long, right? But this is a kind of proof that it happened in the bytecode. OK, uh, looks like we're kind of wrapping it up here, but uh, I wanted to think about what else and what challenges are out there. Um, I've had an issue open for quite some time on the Android repo to look at implementing auto instrumentation for the width span annotation. So width span is something that we have in Android that you can stick on any of your business uh, application logic methods, and you will automatically get a span that wraps that. And it's really powerful to quickly and easily add code without to, to add instrumentation rather 
uh, without necessarily having to modify your business logic or add sprinkle instrumentation code inside. And so having support for that I think would be super awesome. Um, that also makes me think about whether or not we can just auto, like add auto instrumentation for the entire agent. I didn't show you the setup code right now, but there is, there is code in there to, to set up the OpenTelemetry SDK and the OpenTelemetry Android instance. Those both have to be manually set up. So maybe we could do the whole thing. Uh, maybe we have to write our own Gradle plugin that has its own special DSL to configure it, or that sounds like a step backwards, but maybe we can leverage file config, right? And so with a file config, maybe this uh, Gradle plugin could then read that and then apply your settings at build time. And then uh, some additional kind of challenges or concerns that apparently I didn't finish the slide, but um, there, there is a new version of AGP that's coming out that we hope the Byte Buddy Gradle plugin can keep up with. Um, there are some incompatibilities that are pending, so hopefully Byte Buddy will do the right thing. And then that, that's kind of repeated. But there's probably also other clever uses that we haven't even thought of yet for this technique. And uh, some quick references. So in the, in the presentation, there are links to both uh, this deck uh, and to the repo where the demo lives if you want to try it yourself. And we are in CNCF Slack. Always want to put a call out for collaboration. This project is relatively small and rel relatively young, and we are definitely uh, interested in finding people who are excited about this topic and want to come help out in OpenTelemetry Android. So that's it. I do have, I have, according to this clock, I have three whole minutes for questions. Yeah, this clock is correct. Sweet. Thank you a lot, Jason. Questions? Yeah, down here. Hey, thank you. I, coming from a Spring Java background, I thought we just add the Java agent, and that's what I'm, I was expecting <laughs> to hear from this. <laughs> but good to know that there are a lot more to be done on making it, and this is one of the the challenges that we are also going through in terms of adopting it for mobile, Android and iOS on our side, right? I think, do you think the probably like we need more contributions to make it, uh, one of the main issues, Android or iOS doesn't have concept called screens or page or views, right? It's very opinionated or uh, it's not opinionated. How do you see the auto instrumentation evolving or setting a standard? Because Otel is all about standard, right? In terms of actually not just uh, enabling the SDK, but also like setting the standard in terms of the views and also the clicks and all the events. What are your thoughts? Is that, in, is that what this is going to from a roadmap perspective or is more like um, getting it to the current level of adding more metrics? That's a great question. I think another talk that I submitted that got rejected was called Roadmap to 1.0 for Android. Um, yeah, all of those things you mentioned are um, falling short right now in the Android world. And uh, like, so the, the top of mind for me is session. Like on, on the client side with RUM, the session needs to be like a first order object. And we have semantic conventions around that, but we don't really have a definition of like what it is or what its life cycle is. And that needs to happen. Um, so a bunch of work needs to happen around semantic conventions, but then also, yeah, the code to sort of define screens. We do have some of that in Android right now. We have code for fragments. We have instrumentation code for fragments and for activities. It's not auto-instrumented. So it, it is, you do get it out of the box when you initialize uh, OpenTelemetry Android, um, but it's manual. You don't have to manually instrument your, your activities. There is an annotation that you can change the name. Um, so to, to get back to your question, we do have fragment, we do have activity. We don't have good support for um, Jetpack Compose, which is kind of the way of a lot of application development is headed. And so that's something we could absolutely use some help with. But yeah, get, getting semantic conventions will, will be a lion's share of the work. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. One more? Yeah. 22 second question. <laughs> No. Are the Java auto instrumentation modules compatible with the build plugin, or is everything essentially net new? This is a good question, um, and I kind of glossed over that in this presentation. So we did make we did clone part of the Java instrumentation to make this to make this work, and I forget the reason for it, but it wasn't we couldn't we couldn't use it as a drop in replacement. So there, there is large compatibility, and we, we do use the Java instrumentation under the covers, but we had to, to copy the binding. I think the, the advice, I think we had to copy. So the underlying implementation is compatible. Um, is everything compatible? I'm sure it's not. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And the last quick question. Okay, quick one. Um, so thanks for the talk. Uh, my question is, um, so I understand that in uh, Android, there's a difference between how the instrumentation is being done. It's different from JVM. But I think the question is around uh, if there's a library, for example, a HTTP client library that I'm using for auto-instrumentation in Java. Um, in Open Telemetry, we have the instrumentation which injects the bytecode because we know the library. But if someone is using a wrapper on top of that library because they want to do some extra logging or something, um, at the bytecode level, still the code is there, but the auto instrumentation does not work in that case. So is there a workaround when we are wrapping up the upstream libraries, but not changing the, like overriding the methods, uh, keeping the matter same? Yeah, I think the good thing on the client side here is that the APK contains all of your dependencies. So, you know, if you were doing like a, like a shadow jar that bundled everything together, then you would have those dependencies in your jar at runtime. But in the APK, it has to be local. Like it has to be part of your package. So I think even if it were like a transitive dependency, like if you were using a wrapper or if like your organization had its own internal HTTP library or something, then that should still, the instrumentation should still work. 